Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today's pick a card reading is what career path should I take? Pile number one is represented by this piece of amethyst and the oracle card. Butterflies in gloom after sadness, happiness, and hope return. Number 22. Pile number two is represented by this gypsy rose or gypsum rosette, um, also known as a desert rose. And the oracle card, you are unlike anyone else. Your contradictions and complexities are interesting. And pile number three is represented by this goldenite jade. And the oracle card, a time to say goodbye. Something is about to end for now. This one is number 13. The other one was number 35. Um, so again, choose a pile. Pile number one with the amethyst, the butterflies in gloom, number 22. Pile number two with the gypsy rose and the um, You Are Unlike Anyone Else, number 35, or pile number three with the Golden Night Jade and the A Time to Say Goodbye, number 13. So go ahead and choose your pile. If you need a little bit more time, go ahead and pause the video. Number three, we'll see you soon. Number two's on deck, and number one, we're starting with you. You chose this lovely amethyst so pretty and <clears throat> your oracle card is butterflies in gloom after sadness happiness and hope return that's a lovely card your other oracle card we will see at the end of the reading this is your steps you can take to get to where you want to go your first card out is the Three of Swords, or the Three of Athames in this deck. This is a card of heartbreak, of sorrow, loss, betrayal. Um, things not being what you expected them to be. I can kind of consider this one the Minor Arcana's version of the Tower card. Um, you know, she was told to meet this guy here at his house, only... It's not his house. Nobody lives here. It's all boarded up. The door is open and she's like, wait, this is sketchy. Um, so it sounds like you're, you've been having a rough time of it. Either you're in a job that you hate or you've been mistreated in your current job or your last job. Yeah, it had you worrying. The Nine of Athames, the Nine of Swords is a card of worry. Of staying up at night, insomnia, stress, trouble, depression, having a hard time just coping. You're in so much emotional pain you can barely make it through. Um, but we've got butterflies in gloom here. So there's, there's sadness. But remember, after sadness, happiness and hope return. So stay strong. We have the crone. This is the strength card. Um, <clears throat> normally when we see strength card, the woman walking beside the lion is a young maiden and she hears her hands on the lion's mouth, forcing it open. The crone is an older woman. She's wise and she understands she doesn't need to force her will upon the lion. She can relate to lo the lion as a fellow being and listen to it for its answers because uh, the, they speak to you through their behavior. Uh, having worked with lions, I can tell you when they're excited, their whiskers are pointed forward. Their ears are erect. They're standing upright. Their, um, their mouths are open as they're flemming. Their tails are swishing, ready to go. Their, you know, their behavior lets you know what they're going to do. If they're excited, if they want to play, 
you may not want to get one-on-one -on -one with them. But if they're calm, if they're chill, if they're relaxed, <clears throat> they'll let you walk right alongside of them. So stay strong. You're going to not physically walk with lions. Nobody, well, okay, I can't say nobody because I have done it, but nobody sane should walk with lions. <laughs> Only those who are professional crazies and are trained to do it. We have the Eight of Wands. The Eight of Wands is a, a message coming in, and it's coming in quickly. Um, in the Major Arcana, I see this is the, the Chariot. Um, there's news coming from afar. It's coming fast. You don't know if it's good news or bad news, um, but it's coming in. She's getting everything ready to go. Once she has everything ready to go, she can send out these messages in response. So there's something coming in that you, I think you've been waiting for. So stay strong. You've been through a hard time. Yeah, have faith. The green man, this is the fool. And the green man speaks of just having faith, of trusting your intuition, your instincts, your gut, and the universe. God, Buddha, whatever deity you want to include here. Goddess, um, what have you. Um, this speaks of just pay attention to the signs, listen to your gut and, and follow, follow your intuition because have faith. Things are going to work out. Stay strong, have faith, follow your intuition. Yeah. You get the perfect job offer or you find the perfect career path. If you're still in school, this is like someone comes in to speak about, you know, cultural anthropology and you are fascinated or um you wind up dealing you know going somewhere and loving a place so much and find out they're hiring and you get a job there um this is finding your purpose finding exactly what you're meant to do where you're meant to be so that you can grow. The Queen of Pentacles is a card of growth. This is a, an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, I probably should go over all of the signs. But she is, um, she can kind of do anything to, to create money. Um, she doesn't usually like go in a negative way. She's sort of wise and can listen to, she listens to her gut, to her intuition. But she also listens to the world around her. You see, just like the crow here listens to the lion, she's listening to the bird. She's having a conversation with the bird. She's watching his behavior and um, and sort of interacting with the world around her in a positive way to promote her own growth and the growth of the people around her. Um, real quick, in case you're wondering, the Three of Swords is the card of Libra. Um, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, again, nine of swords. Um, I think that's Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, uh, <clears throat> the crone or the strength card is the card of Leo. Eight of wands is Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The fool, I don't believe has any signs attached to it. I could be wrong. I don't recall any. Um, the lover's card is Gemini. The queen of pentacles is an earth sign. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and we have the death card. This is a, a Scorpio. The, the death card speaks of change. And, and you see it here. You go from this worried place where you start ha pulling strength and having faith in yourself because of whatever this message is. Maybe if you're in school, maybe a professor pulls you aside and tells you like how amazing you did on that last essay. Or um, it could be that... Um, Someone you, you know, your boss comes to you and tells you that you did a really fantastic job on that report or, hey, you landed that client. Nobody else could. Um, but you start having faith. You start trusting your intuition. You come into this job that you love. You start growing and you change. Well, this is a card of excess. The king of chalices, the king of cups. Um, 
This is a loving person, a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. But this is someone who can have a tendency to overindulge. And when you have cards like this, it's almost like you're solid and dependable, but then you kind of change and go off the rails. So be be wary of this. It This part doesn't need to happen if this is for you. <clears throat> this might not be the message for you. This might be a message for somebody else. So um, for you, your message might just be here that um, you've been worrying and stressed a lot about a betrayal at work. Maybe somebody put their name on your work <clears throat> and there's nothing you can do about it because they're higher up than you. So you just have to stay strong. And when you stay strong, you find out that um, their bosses went ahead and did the digging and found out that you you did this. And because you had faith and didn't go tattling or complaining, you know, you're sort of the star of the hour. You um, you wind up beloved. They give you a, a promotion, a raise, um, something, you know. And, um, and something changes. And either love comes in for you, like you're, you love what you do, you wind up loving the people you work with, you love your job, or um, this could be self-love. It, it could be that you're going through a rough time in other ways and you're extremely depressed. But if you stay strong, this job offer comes in and it leads to this absolute, just perfect place for you where they tell you like you're the best employee they ever had. Um, it's such a fun and wonderful place. And I really, really want that for you. So I hope that is yours. Um, so you, it, it's like you, you make the change necessary to make this permanent, to keep this, you know, happy and loving. Yeah. The sun card, this is the best card in the tarot deck. This is, this is a card that turns every other card on this table positive. Like, yeah, you got your heart broken, but you learned from it and moved on. Yeah, you were stressed, but now you're you're out in the sun and everything's looking better and uh you're moving around and you're you know, you're keeping busy and you're having faith and you're finding things you love to do and you're working at it and growing and things are looking up. So make sure you balance yourself. <clears throat> If you are going in for a promotion or um, for a new job, I would suggest that you kind of hold off any emotions that you can and learn everything you can about the company. So that when you go in there and they say, do you have any questions for us? You can fire back like 20 or 30 at them. Okay, maybe not 20 or 30, but at least like 10 or 5. You know, employers like to hear that you have questions for them, because if you have questions for them, then you're interested in what they're doing. And that's important. <clears throat> and the witch, you're manifesting this. You're manifesting everything good because you're putting in the work. You've been hurt, you've been heartbroken, but you're not letting it get you down. You're getting you're getting right back up. You're staying strong, you're moving on, you're keeping yourself busy. You're um you're finding a perfect job and growing a whole new network and new life for yourself. And what steps can you take to get there? Elizabeth and the Lion. It is time to become a great leader. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I, I love when that happens. But pile number two, some of you I said, you know, go for the promotion or what have you. Y yay! <laughs> Celebrate! Um, <clears throat> it's time to become a great leader. You've had your heart broken. You, maybe you, you've had a really shitty boss that has just heaped trouble on you and you've stayed strong and then this change comes this message of change and you start having faith and when you start having faith you start enjoying it again and you start growing again and things around you change and become this loving plentiful atmosphere where you're happy and you're able to be more balanced and grounded and manifest everything you want changes and happiness butterflies and gloom after sadness happiness and hope return 
it's time to become a great leader. Um, what should you do in your career? I, well, obviously, you're someone who should be in charge. Um, you take the time to do the work. You take the time to listen to people. You take the time to have faith in what you're doing and trying to look on the brighter side of everything but still stay fair and balanced. And, and you, you, you could also be a judge you would be a fantastic judge because you've been through hard times you managed to stay strong you know what it's like to you know hinge on one bit of communication to wait for that one thing to really make things spark and um yeah so honestly let's you're a leader Whatever genre of job you go into, whether you are um, going into construction or you're going to be a teacher or you want to read tarot cards, you're a leader. You're a boss. And this is saying that you make the changes necessary to change the way of thinking to bring more happiness and contentment into your life. And you do it on your own because you're awesome. So, pile number one, what steps should you take in your career? Um, keep on working and doing what you're doing. Trust your gut, trust your intuition, have faith, and find the thing that you are most passionate about. I mean, they always say that. Um, there was a, a whole thing about what would you do if you had a million dollars and never had to work again? Well, that's what you should do as a job. Um, and, and there's something to that. I, the jobs I've had in my life have all been ones that make me smile, that I enjoy, that, uh, that I have fun with. And, and the people that I enjoy patronizing, like, um, I don't mean patronizing, like talking down to, I mean like buying something from like um, actresses, actors, authors, things like that, are the people who are bright and optimistic and loving and caring and working to try and change the world for the better on their own time. And um, it sounds like to me, from what I read here, you're one of those people, so rock on, pile number one. <laughs> rock on. Um Thank you for spending time with me. Um, if this resonated with you, please hit the like button. Uh, think about subscribing and hitting the bell icon. Leave a comment down below. Tell me about yourself. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see. And thank you so much, pal number one, for spending some time with me here. I really appreciate you. And I, um, I think you're going to do great at whatever you do because you put the work in, you work hard, and you learn. You don't just walk away, and that's pretty cool. So thank you. Bye, pile number one. Pile number two, you got the gypsum rosette. Really cool little stone here. <clears throat> My eldest gave me a bunch of semi-precious stones. But you, you are unlike anyone else. Your contradictions and complexities are interesting. Maybe you wear a lot of bright colors. Uh, maybe you have different colored hair than normal. But you're quirky in some way. And that makes you really cool. I'll do that so you can see. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm... I look at these at the end so that we know what steps you have to take. First card, the Ten of Wands. This speaks of putting something down, a burden. You see the road here is really, really rough. It's hard for her to get over. There's a lot of holes and rough stones and some moss and a freaking squirrel who's no help at all just kind of sitting there chittering at her. She's got all these all these wands on her back, all these sticks. 
She's trying to get up there. If she can get up to there, she'd be fine. Once she gets past this rough spot, there might be a couple other little rough spots. But once she gets past this, it's pretty much clear sailing. But if she was smart, she would put the sticks down and use both hands, right? So the Ten of Wands is usually a card of putting down your burdens. And that might be something that you're doing. Maybe you're near retirement age and trying to figure out what to do now that your job is over. It could be that um, you're putting an end to one career and starting something that you never thought you could do. Uh, whatever it is, it, it's exciting to you. Whatever you put an end to, you move forward in excitement. The Knight of Wands is someone who, well, they don't sit still well. Um, they're not exactly the one where if you say be there Tuesday at 3 p.m., they won't call you Tuesday at, you know, 2.59 and go, I can't make it. Um, but they are the one that when you, when they do make it, they make it fun. They make it exciting. They make it adventurous. And, um, it's almost like you put down a, maybe you're putting down a certain viewpoint or a certain way of, that you used to look at things. Maybe you're trying to change to a more positive point of view, um, which is really cool. It's really hard to do, but you can do it because... You're the King of Pentacles. The King of Pentacles is usually an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, but they're someone who is stable and solid, dependable, wise. They know how to grow things. They know how which field to plant the beans in this year to make sure that the beans grow to the best of their abilities and not take too much out of the soil. They know which paddock to put the cattle in to get the best milk because the grass is sweeter over there. They know what they're doing because they've done it for a while. Um, yeah. And maybe this person either, maybe this is you or maybe this person comes in or you meet them traveling somewhere. You've been holding on to something. The Four of Pentacles speaks of, you know, holding on to something that doesn't serve you. Holding on to finances, holding on to money, um, not being open, being scared that you're going to lose it all. He's got these pentacles, these beautiful pentacles hanging on his wall. And this guy knocks on his door and his first, his first thought is, let's hide them. Because he doesn't want them, the guy to steal them. So, it's not... You're not experiencing lack. You're just afraid that you will. But you're the king of pentacles. So you will find a way. It may not be the way you want. But you're cutting something out of your life. The king of athames, the king of swords. This is someone who is able to sort of control their emotions. And deal with what needs to be dealt with. They can cut through the problem dispense with it and move on to the very next piece of mail without stopping because if they involve their emotions at all it'll be a wreck and it'll never get done but they know what they're doing and they know how to move forward because they can see the big picture and they know they're very good strategist this is an air sign um, Libra Gemini Aquarius <clears throat> we've got the eight of pentacles the eight of pentacles speaks of taking the time to put the work into something you see he's hand carving all of these pentacles he's already done with them he's already carved them he's already oiled them or sanded them you know polished them buffed them oiled them given them a whole new life maybe even shellacked them so that they shine he's put a lot of work into it and they're well done. The work is is brings in the rewards because the three of wands is your ships coming in. Obviously, it's very evident right there. The ship is coming in. You see the tree growing. Um, it's not fully grown yet. 
there's a lot more to come. So stay on the path that you're on. Make sure you nurture this tree. Make sure that when these ships come in, you check all that cargo and you take care of the the crew and the captain and, you know, your assured success. I'll give you a full reading of what it all means together in just a moment. The High Priestess is a card of trusting your intuition. You know what is right for you. You know what's go what what you should be doing, where you want to be, and what you'd like to see. And if you focus on that and you take the time to really work at it, you're going to get there. I mean, your ships come in, you're going to get there. Have faith. You've put the work in. What steps should you take for your career? Let's see. You need something unconventional. You need something that will allow you to put it down and go off and travel and then pick it back up and still make money from it. Um, you need so to let go of the idea that you can have a desk job. Um, you're a hard worker, but you know, you'd rather be out on the docks than behind the desk. Um, because sitting still is, is not your forte. And if you put down, if you get rid of this burden of the, this idea that may, maybe you want to be, um, I don't know, maybe you want to be a Broadway singer and actor, actress, and everybody tells you, you know, oh yeah, you have a great voice, but I don't know, nobody really gets that kind of job, and you hear all these people, they move, and they don't get it, and then they do all, all these awful things just to make ends meet, and, and they try to scare you out of going, it's out of a place of love, but it, it, it's not helpful, and here, you're like, you're putting down all of the shit that, that is not helping you. And you're moving forward to something that excites you. You're putting the work in. You're growing. You're letting go of the old ideals. And your ships come in. Now, I'm not saying quit a good paying job with great benefits to go pursue your dream as a, a Broadway you know, singer and actress. What I am saying is m maybe see... If you could take steps in that direction, if that's a place that brings you, you know, the most love and excitement, because if you're just living life every single day, just barely hanging on to what you got and not excited about what's happening, then what's the point? So if you have a great job, don't leave it to become a Broadway singer. But maybe if you're in New York on vacation, or maybe you can schedule a vacation to New York and try and book some open calls and see how it goes first. Baby steps. A little bit at a time. Another thing you can do is try and build up a YouTube following. Um... I don't know why I keep saying singer because I see somebody dynamic. You have a dynamic in different sort of career. Uh, maybe you work on a ship. Maybe you work as a carpenter or um, some skilled tradesman. Um, it could, you know, you don't want to work behind a desk, I don't think. Um, maybe you're a farmer. Your family is a far are farmers. Uh, what steps can you take to get to where you want to go? Dragonling Garden. A new world is born. Well, the Dragonling Garden, a new world is born, is basically saying you need to, to grow something. It's time to put down roots, but it's time to put down roots at something that you enjoy. Something that you could see doing for the rest of your life. Something that you don't view as slay is <sighs> Pardon me. 
something you don't see as laborious, <clears throat> but you see as exciting and fun, yet still brings money in, you know. Maybe you don't, you know, get the lead in a Broadway show, but maybe your first time out you do get in the a back backup roles. I'm so sorry. I don't know anything about Broadway, so I have no idea why it would come up, but it has. Maybe one of you wants to be a Broadway singer. If you, if you do, take the time, take the steps, and um, don't sacrifice something that you like. I mean, if you have a job that's good, that's well-paying, don't just up and quit and move to New York and think you're going to be on a Broadway show. Um, you know, like I said, maybe save some money, take a trip to New York, see about going on a couple open calls, see what you could do while you're there, visit talent agencies, you know, take the steps you need to take to get to where you want to be. Um, but I do see you, um, successful as long as you put the work in and you trust your gut and you really need to trust your gut. Um, because you know, you're, you're building a whole new world and it's going to be really great. Um, cause you've taken the time to put the work in and you're not holding on to things that don't work for you. You're, you know, you're doing a really good job here. Pile number two. And <clears throat> you've been through a bit of a rough patch, but things are moving forward now and they're moving forward a little quickly. Um, but in a good way. And um, you are unlike anybody else. And the most important thing about having a career that is not a desk job career is that you need to believe in yourself. Because until you believe in yourself, nobody else is going to believe in you. So take the time to do things right. Um, I started this channel because um, I, I love tarot. I love it. I have been spending the last five years learning tarot. And um, I wanted to share some of what I've learned. And I wanted to try and put some positivity out there, um, some problem solve, some love for the tarot and uh that's what i'm trying to do with this channel and maybe you're trying to do something similar believe in yourself take the steps you need to to learn the most you can about whatever you're studying and move forward with excitement and the belief that you can do it and the willingness to put the work in and you won't ever fail I mean, that's a winning combination right there every single time. That's every single sports star that's a number one. That's, that's every single pop star or rock star or rapper that hit the top of the charts. Um, so thank you, pile number two. If you like this, hit the like button, subscribe, bell icon, all that stuff. Comment down below. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see. Sort of pick a card readings you'd like to see moving forward. And, um, yeah, thanks for spending time with me. And I'm sorry if I mommed at you and ranted or grumbled or, you know, told you to love yourself too much. Because <laughs> I just know it's rough out there. And sometimes we need to. We need the reminder that we need to love ourselves. So, pile number three. I love you too. You got the Golden Knight Jade. Your oracle card is a time to say goodbye. Something is about to end. For now. This oracle card we will read at the end. This will tell us what steps you need to take in your career to get to where you want to be. We have the Seven of Pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles is you're in the process of working. You're working hard, you're putting the time in, but you're not like, 
You're not quite busting your ass yet, but it will get there because you've got a lot to go on. You're about to, you, you've started shellacking this one. You've got all these to go and by Jove, you're going to do it because you're willing to, you're willing to put the work in. Our last pile was too. <clears throat> it sounds like with the seven of pentacles and the seven of athames or seven of swords, it sounds like you put work into something and were cheated out of it. Maybe you put time and money into your company's, you know, management training program and they passed you over for a promotion because of whatever reason, you know, maybe it's that you're a woman or that you're trans or that you're black or that you're, you know, Korean or that you're Mexican or that you have blue hair or that you have green hair or that you're, you know, I don't know, but it looks like you, you put in some work for something and you got cheated out of something. So you take the time to figure out what you can do on your end to improve. Maybe not for this company or these people, but just in general, so that the next time you nobody will can pass you over without looking a fool. And something massive happens. The Wild Hunt is the Tower card, and this speaks of false foundations crumbling down. So... <clears throat> You're putting work into something, you get cheated out of the promotion, and maybe you look into something, and when you look into why you got cheated out of this promotion, you know, maybe, like, the boss is like, oh, well, I have a crush on Fred, so I just decided to promote him, or some crazy shit like that. <clears throat> um, or it could be that you're... someone is you put work into something and you're hiding something from yourself um maybe you've spent thousands of dollars on a acting classes or painting classes and you are not very good at it and you're starting to come to the realization that you're not very good at it and you put an end to to it Ten of athames, or if you're the position that you know you put in some work and they passed you over for the promotion, they cheated you out of the thing. You go inside yourself, and you know things kind of fall down, and you put an end to it because you walk away. The Eight of Cups speaks of walking away, of <clears throat> of knowing you deserve better. And leaving behind the things that don't work for you to go and get better. The five of chalices. It might be something you're sad about or that you, you spend time mourning. But in the end, there's something more exciting coming. The king of wands speaks of excitement, of fun, of you know, being on the dance floor, dancing till 3 a.m., um, all the good things. They're generous, they're, but they, they can have a bit of a temper, so be wary of that. Um, but your, your King of Wands does not seem to have that, because he's got the Knight of Pentacles here, which says he is, um, solid, dependable, Possibly a little slow moving, but he gets there, and when he gets there, everything is perfect because that's how they do. And you have two Virgo cards here the Hermit and the Knight of Pentacles are both um, Virgo cards. So if uh, you have a Virgo in your life or a Virgo in your workplace, um, they might have something to do with this. The Six of Pentacles. This is a card of a give-and-take relationship. A good give-and-take relationship. 
balance things being how they should be. And the Ten of Pentacles, financial success, happy family, <clears throat> having everything you want, everything you need. Let me take a quick overview. It's time to say goodbye. Well, you've spent time working on something and were cheated out of something. When you do the digging, something falls away and you put an end and walk away. And you're sad about it, but you move forward knowing it's for the better. And you find something that you can depend on, something that is a give and take, something that allows you to actually be financially successful. And what do you need to do to get there? Little brother, little sister, siblings, younger friends, responsibility. Well, maybe they've been putting a lot of responsibility on you at this job and you don't want it and you need to tell them that. Maybe you don't want the promotion, but they're acting like you do and grading you like you do and treating you like you do, which is cheating you out of what you truly want. And... Every single time it becomes this dramatic situation until you put an end to it, walk away and tell them, look, I don't want that shit anymore. I'm done. I don't, I don't want that promotion. I don't want that job. I'm happy where I'm at. And then they leave you alone and you're happy to be who you want to be doing what you want to do. And you're still loyal to the company. It could also be that you've put a lot of work into your education and then you realized you wanted to do something else and you switched what you wanted to do. And you think it, it's a good move for you and something falls apart. And so you put an end to the idea that you can do that. You walk away from the idea and you get, you're sad about it, but you get another opportunity, a better opportunity, more dependable, more financially successful that is helpful um, so that's what I have for you pile number two as far as or pile number three as far as what steps you can take um, maybe if you're complaining about work instead of complaining to someone at work complain to family um, so that it doesn't get back to the boss uh, if they're not treating you right Find another job, something that you love doing, something that does treat you right, that is a give and take, something that is dependable, reliable, pays you what you deserve. Because you're putting the work in, you're seeking out the wisdom, you deserve better than that. So maybe it is time to say goodbye. Maybe it is time to find something that works better for you. Maybe you need to realize that you deserve so much better than a job that you're miserable at just because it pays the bills. Do some research, take a look around and see what you can find. Maybe there is a job out there that isn't just paying the bills, but is something that you'll have fun at. And maybe it's a job you would never expect in a million years. You never know. We're reinventing ourselves all of the time. Every, you know, what is it, every eight years, every cell in your body is completely different from where it started. So it's, it's not impossible to change and to create a new life, a new career in something you never considered before. But it takes the work, it takes the effort, it takes sitting down and doing the thing and you can do it, you can. But you have to do the work to believe in yourself. And, and you're going to get there. Um, so that's what I have for you. Pile number three. If you like this reading, hit the like button. Um, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And if you have any comments or what kind of pick a card reading you'd like to see, please leave it down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for spending time with me. And for those of you wondering what decks 
I use. The This one here is the Green Witch Tarot by <clears throat> Anne Mora and Kiri Estergaard Leonard. And the Oracle cards are the Oracle of the Shapeshifters by Lucy Cavendish and Jasmine Beckett Griffith. And that's these cards right here. So, thank you for taking time with me. And um, remember, you're awesome. And you deserve really great things. So, believe in yourselves. Because I believe in you. And, yeah, I know you can do it. I love you guys. Bye.